Hi, this is Janae from Designs by Juju. In this video, I will demonstrate how to create a custom name or word applique using our alphabet embellishment kits. For years, Designs by Juju has offered a diverse range of themed applique alphabets. Many of you have asked, can we mix and match design elements from different letters or different fonts? That hasn't really been possible. So we've created a whole new line of designs that allows you to customize to your heart's content. Our new alphabet embellishment kits are designed with your creativity in mind, allowing you to personalize projects as you desire. Each design in the kit coordinates perfectly with our Daisy Doodle Bean Stitch Applique Alphabet. At the time of this recording, we have five different embellishment kits that are available to purchase, with more coming soon. Let me walk through the process of creating this Sophia design in embroidery editing software. I'm using Embrilliance Essentials, but if you have a different program, the process will be very similar. Please note this cannot be done in the free Embrilliance Express. Combining design files is a paid feature of Essentials. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have my hoop set to the dimensions I want. So for this project, I am going to be using a six by 10 hoop. So I have it set to the 160 by 260 millimeter and click OK. And I'm going to click this hoop button to rotate it so that my name can fit across here horizontally. Now I need to determine what size font to use. We did include BX installation files with the Daisy Doodle applique alphabet. So the first thing I will do is create a lettering object. I will type the name Sophia and from the pull down menu, go to the Daisy Doodle font. And let's just start with, let's say the three inch size. Oh, it looks like I probably have a little bit more space in my hoop. So maybe we'll try the 3.5. That fits nicely. If I go all the way up to four, that really starts um, filling the space and I may not have enough room to add in all my extra items. So I'm going to stick with the 3.5 inch size. Now using the BX file helps me figure out placement. Maybe I want to spread these letters out a little bit um, using the space tool. And I'll, I'll use this as a guideline, but just a heads up, I will end up deleting this lettering object uh, at the end. Now to recreate that picture that I showed you a minute ago, I'm going to swap the O for a pineapple and swap the I for a flamingo and then add in a couple minis. Since I'm using the 3.5 inch size alphabet, I will go to the um, tropical alphabet embellishment kits. I want the 3.5 inch size of the embellishments as well. These have been perfectly sized to match the shape and dimensions of the lowercase letters of the 3.5 inch size. So I will take the pineapple design and I'm just gonna drag and drop it here into my open workspace. And for now, I'm just gonna lay it on top of the O, I'm trying to get the positioning of all these letters just right. Then I also need the flamingo. So let me go back and find the flamingo and I will drag and drop that in. And I'm gonna position that um, about here. Then I also need two minis. I added sunglasses to the pineapple. So let me go back to my folder and find those mini sunglasses and drag them here. And I'll just kind of, for now, I'm just gonna loosely place them. And the last mini that I want for my project is the mini popsicle. And um, I'm gonna maybe just rotate that a little bit and stick it here in between the P and the H. Okay, as I mentioned, I had used this lettering object for her full name kind of as a placeholder, but I actually don't want that O to stitch and I don't want the I to stitch. And as I position things, I may want to individually move the letters. So it's actually a lot easier if each letter is either its own lettering object or just merge in the PES files for these letters as well. So I'll show you both ways. I'm gonna leave this in place for just a few minutes. I will um, click the A button to create a new lettering object, type a capital S and hit um, set and position this in place. Then create another lettering object. I don't need the O, but I do need a lowercase p and we'll place that here. Then type a lowercase h. a new lettering object and a lowercase a. All 
All right, now I can go up here and I can delete my lettering object so that I have independently these four letters. If you're using a different program than in Brilliance, you don't have access to the BX files, and that's okay. You will simply merge in the individual design files in the format of your choice. Since I have a baby lock machine, I use PES files, so I would go to the 3.5 inch folder of my Daisy Doodle alphabet, and I would find the capital S and drag it in, and the lowercase p, and the lowercase h, and the lowercase a. And so then I would have all the design files that I need. Real quick, let me explain the difference that you uh, may see here. Remember, if you're using a lettering object, that is something where you can type text and change the size quickly, change the font quickly. And in the objects panel, a lettering object just looks like this. It doesn't expand. Only design files expand to the color stops. So down here where I have merged in my PES file, this is where I can expand it and see the placement and tack down stitch. So again, in Brilliance users, you may prefer to merge in individual design files instead of using the lettering objects. Once you're sure that this is a lettering object that you want, you could right click the stitches and say convert to stitches. And then it will, um, instead of it being a lettering object, it is now a design file that expands. But by doing that, you've lost the lettering tab here, so you can't make any changes. All right, I've got way too much going on on my screen here. So I'm going to go up to edit undo. Uh, so I've got my, four lettering objects, and I'm gonna delete these duplicate letters because I don't need them. Everything is sort of placed where I want, but now what I need to work on is finalizing my position and paying attention to the stitch order. In general, on these projects, I prefer the letters to be stitched first and then the embellishments to be stitched on top in case there is any overlapping. So I need these to be in sequence first in Embrilliance, I will I can right click and choose move first and that's going to put my S, P, H and A all at the top. And then I have my applique pineapple. I think I would want my sunglasses to stitch immediately after that pineapple so I can move that, then my flamingo and then finally the little mini. All right, let's work on positioning. I think I want to tighten this up a little bit, maybe move the H closer to the P so that I can scoot the flamingo out just a little bit and just have his beak overlapping the A. And let's move this pineapple this direction just a little bit so that its leaves are kind of centered between the S and the P. And then once I have that positioned, I can put my sunglasses centered on the pineapple. And let's see, is there anything I wanna do with the popsicle? Maybe I'll just set it right there. Okay, I have everything positioned where I want. I have the sequence S, P, H, A, then the pineapple with its little mini sunglasses, then the flamingo, and then finally the popsicle. I can now select everything and center it in my hoop. And now if I were to take it to my machine, this is going to stitch with um, the S first, so if I, select this lettering object, you will see that on the color tab, it has a placement step and then it has a bean stitch tack down. These appliques do not have placement tack down and satin stitches. Because these letters are finished with a bean stitch and you will trim at the end, they are only two steps. That is to maximize stitch sufficiency at your machine. The design file must have two different color stops so that your machine will stop and allow you to lay down your fabric, but I would probably just load the same thread color to my machine. Having the S, P, H, and A as independent letters, each with two color stops, allows me to use different fabrics for every single letter, as shown in the sample. If you compare this design file with the stitched sample, you will see that we use black thread for the bean stitches around every single applique shape. So while the design files show a green thread and a yellow thread for the pineapple, we actually chose to use green fabric and yellow fabric, but 
load a black thread to our machine for all of those bean stitches. We really like the way this adds definition. It helps mask if your trimming isn't super neat and just kind of view it as a coloring book that has black lines and you're using the fabric to color in those lines. So you can, at this point, if you're gonna do that, you can save your design file as is, or you can choose to change all those thread colors to black at your machine. So if I were to do that for the S, I could right click the cornflower blue and choose change color on page and select black thread and it will change all of those cornflower blue bean stitch steps to black. And then I can do it individually for my little applique pieces. I will want the placement step to still be a distinct color from the tack down step, but I can change this by left clicking and let's go to palette to narrow down my options and choose black. And then same for the green, instead of olive green, I would want black. And then for my flamingo, instead of the pink bean stitch steps, so this would be its placement step and this would be its tack down step. And so I would want black for that. Before I save this, let's double check our sequence. I have placement and bean stitches for the S, placement and bean stitches for the P, and for the H, and for the A. And then for my pineapple, I will have placement and bean for the pineapple, placement and bean for the leaves, then the sunglasses. All right, this actually might be an issue. If I have set that to be black, I want to trim that fabric out before the sunglasses stitch. So I need to make sure that these are two different thread colors. So for the sunglasses, I'm going to um, change this to a gray. At my machine, I will still use black, but I want my machine to stop so I can trim that fabric out before I stitch the sunglasses. Then my flamingo, We'll go from the blue of the sunglasses to the black beak, the white part of the beak, the legs, then the placement and tack down for uh, tack down bean stitches for the fabric of the flamingo. And then finally it's wing, it's little eye, and then the popsicle will stitch last. All right, so at this point then I can go up to file, save as. If I save a working file, then all of these designs will be separated out as individual objects so that later if I need to recreate this, uh, maybe with a different name, or if I decide I wanna reposition some of the pieces, a working file will allow me to come back to these eight objects. If I go up to file and choose um, a stitch file, that's where I will choose the PES format and it will save this as a PES file that I can take to my machine and stitch out. Let's take a look at the working file for the beach house design. In this case, we used the three inch size lowercase letters for the B, E, C, and H, and then added in a few um, different applique embellishments from the three inch size of the beach set. So the beach hat, the umbrella, and some um, the little house, and some minis. I wanted to point out, I said that generally I like the applique letters to go first and the embellishments to come on top, but in this case, we wanted the umbrella to be stitched underneath the H, so it actually has to come first. So if you look at the sequence over here in my objects panel, we start with the umbrella, then we do the applique letters with the beach house little hut in the middle representing the A, the beach hat, and a couple minis. You can also customize by adding text in the font of your choice. And so this is shown with our best friend forever script. As I mentioned, the embellishments are sized to be in scale with the lowercase letters of the Daisy Doodle alphabet. And so they, they swap in really nicely for lowercase. If you want to use an all capital project, so let's say I was going to type the word summer with capital letters and replace the vowels with some fruit from the tropical kit. 
if I choose the, let's see, this is the 2.5 inch size of the alphabet. If I use the 2.5 inch size embellishments, they're a little smaller because they're scaled to be lowercase letters. You may want to bump up and instead use the three inch size of the embellishments if you're swapping them for a capital letter. Thank you for watching. We can't wait to see what you create with our alphabet embellishment kits.